And Thailand's parliament has voted against allowing election winner Peter Lim Duran Rat a second shot at the premiership. The nation's constitutional court also accepted a petition to probe Mr. Peter's alleged flouting of election rules. And for more on the Thai political situation, I'm joined by Aim Sinping, a senior lecturer in comparative politics at the University of Sydney. Dr. Sinping, our correspondent earlier said it's game over for Mr. Peter Lim Jaran Rudd. It's game on, though, for the party that, that came run up in the elections in May. That's, of course, poor Thai party. It has put forward its prime ministerial candidate, that six-year-old uh, Seta Tavisin, a real estate tycoon, business-friendly uh, character. Uh, the question now for poor Thai is, does it stay with the eight-party coalition, including Move Forward, or does it seek other parties in a new alliance? Both scenarios are possible, but the original eight uh, coalition or alliance that was led originally by Move Forward Party is now falling apart publicly. Um, a number of leaders of the parties that are in that coalition, the original MOU, are now coming out on Twitter uh, and Facebook, uh, basically saying, look, PITA's, you know, PITA's departure and in some ways Move Forward's loss is the party's problem that they rely too much on young people. So it looks increasingly more likely uh, by the minute now that perhaps Thai would consider forming a coalition government with parties that were not in the original eight parties in the MOU. So parties from the old government. So you're looking at Bum Chai Thai, possibly Pralang Patarat, also a possibility. And for them, Move Forward has served the function of showing them that if they do not ally themselves with poor Thai, the alternative is to have a prime minister like Mr. Peter Lim Joran Rat. The events that have unfolded since the election sent very strong signals from the political elites both the, from the government and in the, the, the potentially new government that they don't want to move forward and they don't want anybody to let move forward govern. So I think Pua Thai now realized it has the opportunity to be the government again and perhaps the Thai has changed. So it's, in, it's looking a little bit more likely now that Pua Thai would take this opportunity, especially particularly because uh, one of its leaders, uh, Patel Tan Shinawat, has already spoken publicly about her father returning to Thailand soon. All right, so that's uh, Thaksin's daughter, who was a PM candidate during the campaign, but now has ceded that position to Mr. Seta Tavisin. But there's a balancing act for Pua Thai as well. Uh, if they look like they're jettisoning move forward, they might lose their support base, which they have already done to some extent in these elections. If it takes a step further and uh, allies itself with, say, Pum Jadai or Pralang Pracharat, the fallout might be even greater in the new elections in the next cycle. Definitely. And I think the biggest job for Pua Thai now, if it decided to partner with some of the parties from the old government, is to really control the narrative, right? Saying, look, we're doing this in order to prevent the country from um, sliding really rapidly towards chaos and political crisis, something that uh, is in the memory of most Thais today, right? Thailand has been in the political crisis pretty much for the past 20 years, if not longer. So everyone remembers what it feels like to live in political limbo, to not know what's going on. So right now, I think if Pua Thai decided it makes sense for them to be the government and to partner with parties that may be from the old government, it's about now constructing a narrative that they're doing this for the nation and they're doing this you know, democratically and that they're not abandoning many of the progressive policies that a lot of people want and they share in similarity with Move Forward Party. Oh, thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Ayn Sinping from the University of Sydney.